one of the things I like to think about whenever I am thinking about doing MANOVA is that it is a quite complex statistic with a lot of steps to it, but that it can be done. So the cake boss here has this really amazing cake. And the reality is if you break it down, if you have great instructions, if you know a few principles to understand the big picture, really you could make that cake if given enough time. So what I want you to do is to think about, we're gonna do this, it's just like making a cake, it's just piece by piece. So listen up and try to catch as much as you can out of the training. This first section is an introduction. So I wanna look at MANOVA in terms of everything else that we've learned in this course um, and in statistics particularly in the Fisher tradition of statistics. So what you have in front of you are the four major analyses that try to compare groups. So grouped data looking at continuous dependent variables. So we started um, this journey when you're looking at Fisher data, you'll start with the t-test. The t-test is the most simple. It is an inferential statistic. That means that you are trying to test a hypothesis, not just look at descriptive data would be the opposite of an inferential statistic. You have grouped or categorical independent variable, but for a t-test there is a limit. You can only have two levels of the independent variable. You can only have two groups or two categories. For instance, male-female would be a common one. If you tried to do three groups, you would not be able to run a t-test. You can also only have one independent variable with a t-test. So you can't look at anything else. And you can only have one continuous dependent variable. So this is the oldest of the group data inferential statistics. And statisticians pretty quickly discovered that this was pretty limited. So they developed the ANOVA, much better statistic to use, more robust. It's also an inferential statistic, so it's testing hypothesis. It's also grouped or categorical independent variable. But there isn't a limit to the levels. Unlike t-test, it can have three, four, five levels um, or groups to the independent variable. If you only have one independent variable that you are testing, that would be called a one-way ANOVA. So for instance, if you were looking at the effects of gender on height, that would be a one-way ANOVA um, with just two, two variables. If you were looking at the effects of age on height, for instance, as another option, then that would be perhaps um, children, adults, middle age, and elder people. Um, and you have four groups and you'd be able to do an ANOVA with that no problem if you divided your age up into four groups and compared them on their height. But if you wanted to look at both gender and age, then you would need a factorial ANOVA. That would be two or more independent variables, each with their own levels or groups, and one continuous dependent variable. So while you see the independent variable on this growing and its ability to handle more complexity, the dependent variable stays the same, just one dependent variable. So we get a little more complex going forward. This is the same thing as an ANOVA, but in this they add a covariate, meaning there is some other variable. Covariates are on a continuous basis or they are dummy coded and covariates are added in. They are not the major research question or hypothesis that's being tested, but there's an assumption that the covariate might carry with it some level of error variance or some level of noise in the field of data. And so you want to make everything equal, all else being equal. So hopefully you've covered all of these things before you get to the piece de resistance, the MANOVA. So this allows us to have all kinds of options. We can have our grouped and categorical independent variable. There is no limit to the levels or groups or categories. So those, those three terms are used interchangeably in the Fisher tradition, um, depending on what book you're reading. So there, but there's no limit to the levels of the independent variable. If you have one independent variable, so if you have gender predicting um, the outcome, that would be a one-way MANOVA. If you have two independent variables, such as gender and grouped age, that would be called a factorial MANOVA. And for it to be a MANOVA, it needs to have two or more continuous DVs. So perhaps you're going to check height and maybe you're also going to check weight. So simple concepts to understand. So this is where we're at. We are headed into MANOVA land.
So suppose we had a study. Let me give you an, another example. And we wanted to study gender and race. And we wanted to study, does gender and race predict success in a particular company? But there might be other indicators of success than something like income, right? How are we going to measure success? Maybe we're going to measure it in income. That might be one thing. Perhaps we also might measure it in the rank. Um, so whatever types of ranking of seniority that they have in that company. You might also do something like supervisor and peer ratings, right? If you did income, rank, supervisor, and peer ratings, you're looking at four dependent variables with two independent variables, gender, assumably on two levels, although you could look at transgender people, but they tend to be such a small percentage of the population that you would really have to work hard to be able to study them and, and oversample them um, in order to meet the uh, equal sample size or equal, equal group size assumption. Um, the same thing happens with race in most companies. You don't have equal race sizes, so you would have to sample um, selectively to make sure that you get equal sizes in the different races that you're looking at. So this would be a MANOVA. You would definitely need to look at a MANOVA for this type of a question. Be a great question. It'd be a great question to maybe do a consultation in a business, um, be able to answer the question for the business and uh, charge them big bucks for the work that you're doing, which is always fun to do with a profession. And this is just a moment of um, inspiration, I hope, for you. Um, Einstein saying, try not to become a man of success, but rather to become a man of value. So I think if you were asking questions like that in a company, uh, maybe you would be successful as a man or a woman, um, but that you would add value to the understanding of the company and hopefully help it to become a better company, more fair and just. That's really important. So... What can you do? Well, you could do several ANOVAs, meaning you could do an ANOVA of gender and race on income, and then a separate ANOVA of gender and race on rank in the company, and a separate ANOVA for gender and race and likability um, or rating by peers, and then a separate one rating by supervisors. So that would be four ANOVAs. That's a lot of ANOVA analyses. And you might be kind of interested in those four things kind of together as a composite score of success in a company. If you want that togetherness, if you want to look at the four things pulled together, you would need to do a MANOVA, and that's what it has to offer you. There are two primary uses for a MANOVA. The dependent variable of interest might be by definition multivariate. So success in a company can be measured in a multivariate way. Intelligence has several essential components and you might want to break it down into those essential components and measure each of them separately. Um, there is something you can also do with a MANOVA. You can investigate how the independent variables influence patterning of responses on the dependent variables. And so a MANOVA will allow you to do that, look at correlated dependent variables, and get a single overall statistical test for the set. So you may want to look at things because it's that's the way the dependent variable is, is that it's um, got essential separate components, like example number one, or you may have number two, where you're trying to kind of pull some things together and look at a big picture. So um, the MANOVA will allow you to do a few things that an ANOVA can't. First of all, you can get a nice overall look at significance of all of your dependent variables together. So to answer that question, are you successful? Um, are people successful in this company uh, regardless of gender and race or are there differences between gender and race on the outcomes for the company? Now, one of the criticisms of a MANOVA is that after you get that big picture story to be able to tell to the company that you are consulting with, um, you usually end up breaking it up into ANOVAs anyway. And so you, by the, after you kind of get the big picture, whether or not that was significant, you usually break it down and look at each of the dependent variables on their own anyway. Uh, it is one of the criticisms of MANOVA is that you end up doing a lot of analyses because of that, but you do get a nice patterning of responses and, and an understanding of the dependent variables together, and that is something to offer to the uh, consumer of your research. One of the things before we go further is to remember that power is a real issue with MANOVA because it is so complex and it's running a lot of ANOVAs and it's running post, you know, post hoc analyses or follow-up analyses of some sort. Um, you're going to need a lot of 
people in your study. Um, you need to have more cases than dependent variables in every cell, so every little group of participants that you're comparing. The smallest cell, they say, should have at least equal to the degrees of freedom for error for the univariate analyses. That's one way of looking at it. That can be a little bit tricky. Sometimes it can be difficult to meet that third criteria there, uh, the third bullet there. Um, and so an example would be is if you have a degrees of freedom um, for error of 20, then you need at least 20 people or subjects in each condition cell. So there's a lot more on this. My suggestion though is not to do this type of thing, but to actually run a power analysis using something like G-Power, um, particularly if you're doing a real study with a community sample, so that you know that you have faith in the results that you have, that they are not spurious. Okay, you've reached the end of the first section of this lecture. You have the introduction. What I suggest everyone does at this point is an activity to put into some kind of portfolio for your understanding of MANOVA. Create your own example of a MANOVA and write down any questions you have so far to be able to bring to the um, class. So there are five sections or five lectures about MANOVA. So hang in there. The next one is called Behind the Scenes.